Here it comes, another cichlid adventure, and look at the ventral fins on that cichlid. Oh, we use the uh, extreme fish food quite a bit in our shop. Uh, we like it very much. Uh, it's very palatable for the fish. We, uh, a lot of times fish that don't eat other things will eat the pellets, which is a great thing. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and today we've got another cichlid adventure for you. I know you cichlid fans really like to see the new species, the different species, and I had an opportunity to, uh, to see another one. This is, we're going to take a look at something called a, a tiger nasuda. This is a, a ophthalmotilopia nasuda tiger, I think is the official name for it, but if you Google around, you're looking for information, you'll find most of it under tiger nasuda, and I'll put that on the screen so you can figure out how to spell it if you're not already familiar with this fish. It's a cool looking fish with very long ventral fins with egg spots at the end of them, and it comes from Lake Tanganyika. And I had a chance once again to talk with my friend Rick Biro, who is an expert. He is a uh, fish farmer who has gone to Africa many, many times, seen these fish in the wild, collected them in the wild, and now raises them on a fish farm in Florida. And again, I do want to remind you, you cannot buy fish di directly from Rick, so don't go looking for uh, Florida exotic fish sales because he only sells to uh, wholesalers and to retailers. But here's my interview with Rick, and here's a look at this really cool fish, the Tiger Nasuda. This ophthalmotilapia Tiger Nasuda is yellow. It really is. It's an upper water uh, fish. It stays in the upper water column. Um, it gets the real long ventrals on the males where the uh, egg spots on the very end of it. When it's actively breeding, what it'll do, it'll, it'll uh, display all that for the female. The female will come up to lay the eggs and they will uh, use those egg spots to uh, entice the female to drop the eggs and it'll spin around and uh, fertilize the eggs and the female will pick it up. It's a mouth brooder. It's like Lake Tanganyikan fish. It gets to be about five inches long. There's a couple of varieties coming from Chimba and another area. And um, they're just a really nice active fish. They're, they're not super aggressive. When they're breeding, they will protect their, you know, whatever they're breeding, but they're, uh, they can go in with the other uh, Tanganyikas, but the males will definitely um, go after each other. So those little white dots at the end of the ventral fins are egg are like egg spots on a Malawi stick. Yes, and they'll get and those will get really long. They'll go past their anal fin and uh, when a big old male gets to be a, a, a full adult, they'll be just that that gold color on the side will just be like an egg yolk and those ventrals will go right past the uh, anal fin. So those are what percentage of full grown? These right here um, I would call what they're I'm surprised they have color like that. Um, but they are still a juvenile. They're acting, you know, they're doing some activity, but they're still kind of a juvenile. Wow. Now where, um, I guess those are just from Lake Tanganyika yes, in general? Yes, yes. And that's an open water swimmer? Yes. So that won't be down in your rock pile so much? It might be when it's breeding come around it, but it, you know, it's a swim, it'll swim in the open water more, upper water column. Okay. But it's not like a sip, is it? No, a sip will, you know, is always. Sip seems to me that they breed all right there in the water and catch the eggs. I don't know how they do it, but I never see them on the bottom when they breed. Wow, and is that, that looks like an expensive fish. It's uh, it if it, from the wild, it's ex, it's very expensive. But um, a tank raised one, it'll be a similar price to a frontosa. Um, it's it's a higher price than a lalupi type deal, but it's more of a frontosa range. All right, and. Uh Water parameter standard Tanganyikan? Yes, Tanger Tanganyikan. And the uh, um, male versus female, the male, only the men, male has, have the uh, spots? Yes. The long ventral fins? Yes, and, and the female will be kind of a, could be kind of a silver green color, a real nondescript, or maybe a little bit of green on the dorsal. And um, they, 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 their eggs are super big. They don't have really huge spawns. They might have 20, 25, but their eggs are very, very large for a uh, Tanganyikan fish. I've never seen one of those in a fish store. I mean, do you have to go to a big city fish store, or how do you find them? I, I don't, it's, it's something I breed two varieties of them, and um, I don't see, I don't know why it isn't, because it's such a good looking fish, and I sell every one of them I've got. 
but I don't, you know, I, it's not necessarily a specialty store. store. They, they have to have a Tanganyika following in the area, most likely to get it, as opposed to any store might buy it at Lalupi or Prentosa. How do you induce breeding? Um, I don't. I don't. We don't do anything special for them. They're, the colonies I have are living in a 300-gallon vault, probably three males and 20 females, and they just, I check them every two weeks, go in and pop them. Did you say they are a mouth brooder? Yes. We just go in and strip them. We call it popping, but it's just stripping the babies out of the mouth. That's a cool looking fish. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Very impressive when it's full grown, five or six inches. Just a super, super yellow color. So obviously, uh, this is a fish that gets up to about eight inches long, so uh, it's a fish that you'll need to have a large aquarium for. It does like that sandy substrate. Uh, there's a lot of video out there on YouTube uh, that shows this fish breeding in captivity. It's a sandy substrate. The male builds a nest and then uses those egg spots to attract the female and show the female exactly where to lay the eggs. So uh, it's kind of a, a cool thing to watch if you want to do a species-only tank, and they will actually breed in a Tanganyika community tank as well. Uh, this is considered a relatively peaceful fish by, again, by cichlid standards. Uh, it's not going to be as aggressive even as some of the other feather fins, so uh, it is a good selection for you, and obviously it is a, a beautiful fish. So I'll put more information and some other links in the description. Hope you enjoyed this fin cast and the cichlid adventure with Rick Biro. And of course, we'll have more of those coming up. Please click around the channel, see what you can find. Maybe you're a cichlid fan. I've got some other types of cichlid videos out there as well. In fact, a lot of them, more in the cichlid adventure series. Uh, and also, if you're interested in saltwater or planted aquariums, I've got some, some videos for you as well too. So please click around the channel and take a look. That's all for this FinCast. Thanks for watching. I'm John Carlin, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.